Irashaimase, everyone. I'm Joe here with me is Mikhail's Dan. Hello and greetings. We've decided to start back up this channel or try again. Eh, keep trying, I guess. Anyways, welcome to Radio Nippon. And we're going to be reading out an essay, or at least Dan will be reading out for the first time my Yu Yu Hawk Show episode one analysis. And then we're going to discuss it real quick. And then we're going to next video jump to Yu Yu Hawk Show almost the entirety of season one in one episode because why the hell not anyways read on <coughs> now the title of this is analyzing you hawk show a sombra beginning and the weight of male depression and suicide oh wait i'm supposed to say self-deletion because youtube oh well in the 90s, there were few anime more adult and darker or better put together than Yu Yu Hakusho. It follows the story of Yusuke Urameshi, discontented youth who falls into fighting with gangs, never showing up for school, or otherwise causing mayhem throughout the locality. Uh, it's and not or. He was really doing all those things. Yeah. But underneath this is a story of a lost boy, depressed and rejected by the world around him. At the same time that Futurama was cracking jokes about male depression and being lost in the world, and that Marvel and DC were celebrating angry characters such I said angsty there in the article. Oh, angsty. Well, angry does that. Uh, yeah, but angsty. Angsty characters such as uh, Batman, Punisher, and the like. Yu Yu Hakusho was in its opening episode was neither celebrating nor revering nor poking fun at this sort of character or problem. Yeah. Now while the first episode does have its stock humor and some great gags, what is so fascinating about it is the grim picture it paints about those who are rejected by society. How in a way the most prestigious how those occupied in medical and educational fields and those who live on welfare aren't necess necessarily always the most sympathetic to the plight of others. And trust me, I've actually worked in education and had to work as a janitor in some medical places. The lack of any sympathy and pity is like, wow. Honestly, I would not trust a lot of the medical people I worked with or, like, half the pe educational people I, I've worked with, with a dog or even a cat, let alone the education of children or the care of elders. The sheer lack of compassion and empathy felt by any of the characters towards Yusuke, by those obligated to care for him, is shocking to an extent. And the bitterness and visible pain that is felt by Yusuke is very reminiscent of goodwill hunting, with Yusuke being in some way no less clever, no less full of potential. In some ways, not in, in some, some way. In some ways, no less clever, no, or no less full of potential. Except the difference is that where Will reacted a little better to some positive reinforcement, Yusuke mocks it, rejects it, and turns away from it. Oh yeah. At the start of the episode, Yusuke reminisces back to the strangest event of his day, namely his time at school. He never attends classes, where he is hounded by his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Keiko Yukimura, abused verbally by Iwamoto, his homeroom teacher, and treated like trash by his classmates who fear him. The first of these figures, after she is done quarreling with him, does however remark to her girlfriends that she feels pity for Yusuke as he doesn't have any friends and is generally despised. Okay, now, a little emotion here. <laughs> now, Keiko, now Keiko grew up with him and her, her parents are the only ones who like him and yet the two have begun to grow apart to the horror of poor Keiko with her friends expressing disgust towards her pity for Yusuke. I mean, they know better. They've heard rumors. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Doubtlessly hearing these things, Yusuke storms off, runs into Iwamoto, who tells him that he's a no-good weed that should have been plucked 
a long time ago. Which this is, i.e., supposed to mean killed. Which, go on. A shocking statement by any stretch of the imagination due to how it flies in the face of the man's duties as a teacher. Real quick, how would you have reacted to, because you've worked as a teaching assistant, how would you have reacted to a teacher saying that to one of the students? I know you've dealt with little kids, but like, let's say you were te- dealing with teenagers, how would you react? A no good weed like you should have been plucked a long time ago. You'd be For, horrified. Because I have been asked such a question in uh, my training, and the first thing that you should do is to take the teacher aside and discuss the matter, but this guy's not likely to do that. is pure evil. Oh, yeah. It should be evil moto. I would I would actually... Uh, report him? Report him, not to the school board, but the so- social services to... Uh, yeah, I think it's a little more complicated in Japan, though, especially in the 90s. Yeah, because if it was here... It'd be... It'd be easier, and I'd do everything in my power to try and destroy him and prevent him from teaching. Although the problem is in Ontario, you'd be destroyed because of the unions. And I'm just saying, no, like, they would definitely go after you and you'd have to move to another province yeah. to work. Although I'd tell the media about him yeah. and the school. But here's another... But there would be one bright spot. You wouldn't be in Ontario. Ah, eh, true. Anyways. As to Tanaka... As to Takanaka, the yeah, headmaster Tanaka. of the school, he tries to reach out to Yusuke in much the same way Sean Deguire, William's character from Goodwill Hunting, did. But Yurameshi, lacking respect for him, mocks him and brushes him off and flees the school. Yeah, Takanaka's a great guy. Yeah. I wish I had a principal like him when I was in high school. Told off by his mother, who treats him as a burden, as she reclines in her futon from the TV, scoffing at her responsibilities as a mother, and telling him to move out. Now, it, right here, there's going to be someone who's going to say, in the manga, it's explained that she's actually sold herself several times to help pay for Yusuke. Yes, she has, but sh- do go on. It is evident she's on welfare and that there is a mutual disgust between her and Yusuke. You see, she's. it is mentioned she is on welfare. She also has insurance, lots of it. And she also does sell herself. So, weirdly... Without doing any serious or real work, Atsuko is actually doing pretty well for herself financially. Which is a little weird. And you got to bear in mind, there's a low cost of living in some parts of Japan. So, if she's living in a smaller town or even a medium-sized city, you don't need... Like, you could almost work a retail job and you'll do fine. In my experience. So, it's one of those, given the size of the town they're in, I don't think they're in Tokyo, it shouldn't be that expensive for her to afford a nice place. But she's just, yeah. After Yurameshi's pops, he's a no-show. Gone. Vamoose. I didn't say that. That was Dan adding it. So, here we have a bright kid, rejected by all, failed by his mother, and full of anger, but the worst part is that after he dies in an accident to save a kid, Yusuke genuinely believes everyone else will be filled with joy and will celebrate. He's not entirely wrong. Which, for a 14-year-old to feel that way, that's, that's wrong. Mm. Weirdly, at 14, I kind of felt that way. The only ones I knew that would genuinely grieve were, that I knew for a fact, were our grandmother, our dad, and our dog. So I didn't, I didn't proceed with what I was planning twice because the dog. But then I pulled myself together for a few years. The reason this is particular, particularly horrifying is that this is a belief that seems to pervade much of the world. Millions of men all around the world feel empty, have been driven either too hard by the working world or driven out of it so that they are, in any case, full of burnout and anger. Turning their rage inwards, they do as Turin did at the end of the Children of Hurin, by turning their proverbial blades upon themselves 
under the mistaken belief that they are better off dead and that all around them would celebrate. There have been more than one Heracles slain by his own hand, and there is a reason there is a growing movement against male depression. Melancholia is a terrible bait beast, and she is one that has claimed the lives of so very many that it could make angels weep to think of so many dead. Yeah. It's unfortunate that uh, society is set up like that. I, I've lost friends to this. That's why I wrote that paragraph that way. Yeah. I, I was quoting also Prior Philip from uh, uh, Pose the Earth. It is enough to make angels weep. Just, it, it's just, like I said, I, I've lost friends. We, we've even lost family member um, to this sort of stuff. It, it's just, and all of them male. And that's something that, yeah, it's, it, it's wrong. And yet, um, I've had a, uh, I've had a relative say we should grieve more for the, f any female ones who think about it than any male ones we've actually lost. And that just, or implied that sort of thing. And that horrified me. We, sh we should, when it comes to grieving for people, we shouldn't discriminate based on gender. Yeah, yeah. In Yusuke's case, it was not a deliberate suicide. Oh, pardon me, self-deletion. Jeez, YouTube's stupid. But and, if, and whoever's watching this over at YouTube and supervising this channel, yes, we're talking about you, too. Oh, yeah, that's going to destroy us in the algorithm. Oh, wow. Our, our channels are all screwed anyways. But the way the characters treat it thematically in this episode is very much how the author intended us to treat it. At first, Yusuke decides he wants to haunt the regular world rather than undergoing an ordeal to get his life back. Bingo, I mean, <laughs> Botan, the pilot of the River Styx, or as she <laughs> calls herself, the not-so-grim reaper. Yeah, I actually called her uh, the Grim Reaper in quotation marks. Bear in mind, she loves the word bingo, is a bimbo, and dressed all in pink, so that she's hard to take seriously. Doesn't take his word seriously. Which, when the one who should have a, a clown nose on her nose doesn't take you seriously, you know that you've hit rock bottom. I, I'm sorry, that, that's a little funny. Mocking him, she decides to give him one night to change his mind and advises him to go visit his wake. And that is one perspective on things change. He is suddenly confronted by the three people who truly always cared for him and how his hasty decision has scarred them. Choices have consequences and some are irrevocably final. The loss of any life is a terrible thing and the worst thing is for a young life to be lost before it is their time. It, Yusuke had spent his life angry, bitter, and broken by the world's cruelty towards him, so that one cannot help but pity him. Though he tried to act tough, the truth was he was still a child in this episode, and no child should face such hatred, so much rejection, and be subjected to what adult men are so often subjected to in so many parts of the world. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying we must... Co cozen our children from all of the world but the fact is that Yusuke should have been worrying about dates, homework should have been thinking about video games or novels or what's cool but instead to be worrying about teachers declaring how much they wish to kill him, his mother complaining that she didn't like having him around and no one taking responsibility for helping him is truly wrong Sure, Yusuke doesn't help his own situation by going around picking fights with his, ri with his rival, Kuwabara, but the fact, that, the fact of the matter is that his seeking out conflict and refusing to allow himself to open up, is, to, open up to anyone was a defense mechanism. It is his only buckler against the cruelty of the world, because as he reveals later in the series, if subtly so, he was afraid. He was terrified that he might let people in and they'd realize how alone he felt and might mock or otherwise destroy him. Yeah, what do you think of that? 
Yeah, because during when he loses Genkai, he does admit afterwards he was scared. Mm-hmm. And the first person he really let in was Genkai. Yeah, and it's sad that at at this wake, aside aside the 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 three that we mentioned before and his mother, the fact that a perfect stranger and her son would come in and grieve Yusuke more than just about everyone there. Yeah. And they didn't know Yusuke yeah. at all. This is a situation a great many of us find ourselves in. Male vulnerability is a difficult thing to admit to. Society at large doesn't generally care and for the most part scorns it. But the thing is, it is there. There are few who can understand and there are even fewer who might extend a helping hand. It is why it is so important that the hand be extended as all men at some point need it. In the case of Yusuke, he was shown kindness only by his headmaster, but he was an authority figure who came in with an almost maternal air about him. He was grandfatherly and Yusuke was scared that he might prove no different from Iwamoto, for example, so that any real bond was impossible. Add to that that the la last of masculinity that seemed evident at first glance as Takanaka is a man best be beset. Be beset by health problems. He's in his 60s or 70s and so doesn't seem cool to the violence-loving Yusuke. What Yurameshi wanted was the helping hand of someone who he could relate to, but who might also offer him something that Takanaka didn't want to. Discipline. Takanaka, compassionate and good as he was, could not bring himself to fully discipline Yusuke because he pitied him, and because of this, Yusuke lacked respect for him. But at the wake... Like, what Yusuke is craving is tough love, not the soft, gentle love of Takanaka. There are, there are some kids that that could work, but others like Yusuke? No. On the other hand, he didn't want his mother's, well, I don't care, go get a job. Like, Atsuko honestly took him for granted. And I've seen some comments where some people were like, yeah, but Yusuke should have been nicer to her then. No, 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 no. It's not on him to be the adult. It's on his mother to be his bloody mother. He's a child. And honestly, he was being the more mature one and trying to actually, like, you know, get me coffee, that whole thing. Yusuke is having to play the adult. There is some ugly child parentification that happened with Yusuke Urameshi. He should never have been acting the parent for his mother. But he does so throughout the season. And not only this season, actually. Throughout the entire show. Atsuko is a disgusting human being. And she's a disgrace. Even in the epilogue in the manga when she cleans up, gets back together with her ex, which is Yusuke's dad. She's a disgrace. And then again, uh, it's revealed in the epilogue that she didn't have to do too much per prostitution because her ex was supplying her with cash because he felt bad. But on the other hand, like he's a real piece of work too. They both suck. That's my point. Like money, giving money to Atsuko, but money that's not spent on Yusuke is not helping anyone. And this is why I kind of have the attitude, if we do believe in child support, maybe the money should just go straight into the kid's bank account, not the mother's or something. Because I've seen too many times where the mother misuses it or says, oh, I'm going to use it on my current boyfriend or husband. And that guy's going to wash it down the toilet. Like, it's not on your ex to pay for your current lifestyle. The system is out of date and has been for like 100 years. Well, our current divorce courts and alimony courts and everything have only been set up in the past 70 years. Really. I think back in the 60s, so that actually about 60 years. There was trouble with it legally in the 20s. Well, there was a different system at the time. Fair. And one that favored men over women at the time. 
as it was a very different time period and divorces could be counted almost on one hand per village or city. Yeah. We're looking at a very different culture and a very different time. But today's divorce stuff has flown so far out of control and punishes men. Basically, it is an active attempt to murder men. Alimony should no longer be a thing anymore. No, because the mother can work. But at the wake, things soon change. Yusuke was under the belief that Keiko did not care for him, and that she nagged out of genuine dislike out of out of genuine dislike for him. English, Dan, use your English. This wasn't the case. In a great turn of events, she's the first to break down, wailing as though she were a widow. Really, the love story between Yusuke and Keiko is going is going to be the grounding force of the for the series and for y- Urameshi. So that widow is an apt term to describe how Keiko reacts and feels. What do you think of that? That is really sad because as much as Yusuke was parentified dad for his mother, she did a great disservice to Keiko because she parentified Keiko for yeah. Yusuke. Well, but also for herself. Keiko had to play mother to Atsuko. Yeah, and that should never have been Keiko's duties. No, no. And it should never have been her pa- Keiko's parents' duties. Mm. Shaken, Yusuke also soon finds that the boy he bullied earlier... Kuwab- and bullied is the apt term. Because he completely bullied Kuwabara. And treated him like a nerd or something. That you shove into the, clo- into the locker or something. Kuwabara, who always loved fighting with him, is no less broken by his death. I think I, I misspoke here when I wrote this. You can't describe what they do as fighting. It's Yusuke using him as a punching bag. Yeah. But yeah, he is broken by this his death. Wailing and shrieking like a madman, Kuwabara breaks into the house, interrupting the ceremony, and throws himself against the coffin, punching the picture of Yusuke before breaking down sobbing against his friends, who sought in vain to keep him from making such a show. To Kuwabara's mind, though the two mocked, derided, and humiliated one and not more like uh, one way humiliation. <laughs> Sorry. And, I, I, yeah, I, typos, I guess. And fought constantly. They were really just playing. A boy with a serious and very strict honor code, one that he dubbed the code of a real man. Yusuke was the only person who could understand him. The fighting, it was them playing. It was how they expressed themselves. In particular, Yusuke. Kuwabara is a masochist by nature. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, the that in- scene when it's like, I ain't leaving until he comes out. He can't. He's dead. That entire scene with Kuwabara shrieking. And it also shows that as much as Kuwabara has his friends, and this is covered in the series, he felt a form of kinship with Yusuke. Because the only person who had it... Uh, who was felt more abandoned than him. Now, his, some of his friends have it worse than Yusuke and Kuwabara put together. But the only one who felt more broken than him was Yusuke. And though he didn't realize it, I would also argue Keiko deep down felt more broken than Kuwabara in some ways. But that's for a later essay. The insult was the only way they could properly communicate. For the two had been both abandoned hated and rejected by society. But where Kuwabara had found solace in kittens, his sister, and friends, Yusuke had no one. So that, to his mind, even if it m- meant taking punches from Yurameshi, at least he was helping him in a way. He was saving Yusuke from taking the wrong path. Yeah. Which, put that way, Kuwabara get, allowing himself to get beaten up in a way was him being kind to Yusuke. And he helped Yusuke draw a line. Mm. In a way, what Kuwabara believed was that their schoolyard games and squabbling was simply how they showed they care. To an extent, he was under the impression that they were brothers. Uh. <laughs> Boy, that... It's, it's strange, and the way they showed they cared wasn't exactly healthy. 
but the fraternal affection was always there. It is just that Yusuke had become so blinded by anger that he took it for granted. But just mm. because Yusuke had come to believe he had no value didn't mean Keiko or Kuwabara believed this. Kuwabara is a strange figure. Hardly bright, full of wisdom and compassion for others, yet brusque, foolish, and impulsive, one who hates to show his softer side in front of Moe's, so that his breakdown is honestly the most heart-rending scene in any pilot episode of any series. Yeah, because like when he's just screaming, um, you come out here, uh, no, you're just scared that I'll beat you up and whatnot. It's like, this, it, it is horrifying. And, you know, like, when he actually punches the picture and says, you're supposed to still be here. And I know he adds, for me, it, 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 it's really a knife in your heart. Because Koabara was a town idiot and a town joke. But, but for him to break down... But it's as he said later. Well, this joke has feelings. Exactly. And the over-the-top explosion of emotions from Koabara, it really gets to you. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It is interesting that it... it it is this that leaves Yusuke utterly shaken and full of guilt as he turns away, rocked to his very core. Yeah, because Kuwabara is dragged away, screaming, No, no, no! And sobbing as he does so. And you do see Yusuke turn away and going, Who the fuck? I thought he was just my uh, punching bag to vent my frustration on. But he cared. And mm -hmm. that, the fact that people cared about him shocked Yusuke. And arguably, the only one who openly showed he cared, to an extent, was Kuwabar. Only to find his teachers the mocking him and Takanaka standing up for him and Kuwabara. Takanaka's words are some of the most chilling and heartrending when he says, Why didn't you stay? No. Why it, didn't you stay? You could have made something great out of yourself. Yeah, because he ends up saying, Damn it, Yusuke, I don't know why I don't have anything good to say. Why didn't you stay? You could have made something great out of yourself. And, and he breaks down sobbing like a baby. And many, many teachers who deal with uh, children who pass from cancer, from mm -hmm. suicide, they break down. One thing that uh, a lot of teachers have a uh, special... Uh, programs that they take have to do with how do you deal with a kid in your class that you know has cancer and you know is terminal. Ha. Yeah. This line is delivered well. The grief in Takanaka's voice such as to make the most stony heart of hearts ache. Yeah. His, it, it is a gut-wrenching scene. His isn't the grief and the sorrow of a man obligated to care, but a man who chose to care. Why? Because he's a man, and he saw the unbridled potential in Yusuke. He saw goodness in him and saw a lost soul. It is for this reason he had to intervene, had to try to rescue him. The old should never bury their young. This is an adage that is true for Takanaka, who goes from a large plump man to a minuscule figure broken by... Loss and trembling before an altar as as he mourns for the only student he could not save. Yeah, because he is able to save Kuwabara. He is able to save Kuwabara's friends. He is able to save every single one of his students. Except Yusuke in this episode. Mm -hmm. He's the kind of teacher who sees all of his students as his children. Arguably his grandchildren, I think. And yeah. And that just makes... Should a grandfather... Like, I know it's wrong for a father to uh, bury his son, but... A grandfather bearing his grandchild, in some ways, it horrifies me even more. You know why? Yeah. Because you like, your grandchildren is like all of your life's work wrapped up in a single being. And to lose that, you're losing everything that you've striven your entire life for. Because your grandchildren are your legacy. And, yeah... Far more than even your kids. And your kids are your legacy. Yusuke was to his school what one could argue Jason Todd was to the Bat Clan. Considered by 
by a great many a bane, a blotch on their honor and record. Yet still Takanaka loved, respected, and longed to rescue him from the abyss the boy had fallen into. Because the old headmaster knew if he gave up on a boy who would fight for him, that to resist fate, to resist against what others call as a shut and closed case, was a nobler path. Simply put, it takes courage to fight for a lost cause far more than it takes to win for, for an already victorious one. Yusuke was a lost cause, so Takanaka wished to fight ag against the tide to rescue the boy drowning in a sea of misery and darkness. This makes him one of the most fascinating and magnificent of all school teachers in anime history, as he doesn't care ha, as he doesn't have much of a role after the first season, but the role he did have was to believe in Yusuke and mourn for him in earnest when no other adult would. Yes, before the series is over, Yusuke will drop out, but I doubt this matters to Takanaka. What matters most to him is that Yusuke has become a man all could be proud of, one who does the right thing and one who has found happiness. The man wished the best for his students for the simple reason that he was a wounded soul in dire need of rescue. You said students. Student. Student. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's no S at the end. The last person at Yusuke's wake we must speak of is Atsuko. It is evident that she is stoned and possibly drunk, a wastrel and a lush. She's honestly a disgrace most of the time, and has shown herself to be a crap mother. But in this moment, she's a mother who lost her only child, whom she took for granted. Her, break, her breakdown is one of the moments that not only shocks Yusuke, but we the viewers, as it shows that for all her crap, she did care deep down. She just never knew how to properly show it, and though she was almost a deadbeat and was ill-prepared, and did everything wrong with regards to her son, she still cared. The fact that she loved her son is a hell of a lot more than one could say about a lot of parents. Believe me, I've had uh, ants worse than Atsuko. And the fact is that Atsuko's breakdown is important for youth Not that, it's not I've had, it's I've ants worse than Atsuko. I've ants worse than Atsuko. And the fact is that Atsuko's breakdown is important for Yusuke's development, as he needs to see that his life did matter to his mother. He wasn't just some mistake she made in middle school, but her son. He was all that she had left. Filial, filial piety is hard for him. Who could blame him? But he should try, still try to apply it. Thing is, with some relationships, it is hard to honor your mother some days, but it doesn't mean you stop trying as all relationships are hard and take work. If it seems thankless, it's fine. If life was easy, just about anyone could, would succeed in it when the truth is that few do. Society is harsh, but this doesn't mean that Yusuke and Atsuko should listen to it with regards to their broken bond. She is his mother, and he her son. That is enough, and that is enough to screw what others think or believe about them, or how much others hate one or both. Mm -hmm. Yusuke would later, after all of this, and after listening to the kid he saved, talk of how kind he was, consult with Boton, and ask if it really was so obvious that he was valued, and about how he couldn't see it. Boton, for her part, admits that it happens to everyone, and yeah, she's right. Honestly, it had been some time since I watched this first episode of this awesome, dark, and often grim horror series. But truth be told, as someone preparing to go leave to teach in the Orient, Takanaka's words hit hard. As someone who has lost family and friends, I get Kuwabara's grief and even Keiko's. Yeah, this is honestly the... Honestly, this is, I'm going to pick up a bit of the reading here. This is strangely the saddest of all the Yu Hawk Show episodes out there. I'll leave the most sorrowful... Well, it's the second saddest. I'll leave the most sorrowful to Dan to analyze at a later date. That's in reference to an essay he's going to write later. But the commentary this episode gives on male depression, on how it is inwardly directed anger 
on how even those who believe they have nothing have something is one that stays. Like, Yusuke's struggle with anger and depression is a shocking, horrifying one. But odds are we've all met someone like him, and I ask of you, bet you couldn't imagine losing them. Or if you did, it left you shocked and numb. That's the thing. Male suicide is higher than it's ever been in history. It is why it is so important for people to look at this sort of episode and think. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Because life is battle. We're all fighting to find our place before the inevitable catches up. But that doesn't mean you take the shortcut out of the race, so to speak. Some may prefer to flee from the challenges and battles set before us all. Yet what is needed is to remember your inherent value as a human being. If you suffer from depression and suicidal thoughts, remember that great Spider-Man line by Howard Mackey. Every man needs from time to time a helping hand. So reach out, vent, but most of all talk and let folks in. No man is ever a one-man show. Every decision you make will affect all the countless people who love you. Remember that you are worth fighting for. You're more than a speck on some random dust ball. You are put on this earth and where you are because you have a mission, a reason for being there. Embrace it and cast off the dark cloak of mourning and know that you will overcome the bad times because the good times are always just around the corner, as Don Bluth once told me. So as for the actual analysis of the episode, normally with our reviews, we do a rating there, there's no point to rating this episode because it is basically a, a four. It is, you, you couldn't do an intro or a pilot episode better than this in a lot of ways. It tackles some dark subjects and it is honestly the most depressing pilot I've ever seen for any show. And it is a crime how Yu Yu Hakusho is not better known amongst anime fans. And Every anime person I've met on Substack has never even heard of this anime. And instead, they're all about Narutard and whatnot. But the thing is, the truth is, Narutard is stupid, Bleach is dumb, and these are just pop culture and a show of the long defeat of history and how things are declining. Yu Hakusho, though, was not like that. It was better. The, the, the fact that in the Hiei vs. Sasuke death battle... Many uh, people in the comment section that actually wanted to yeah, go yeah. evaluate Hie went yeah, to whatever. watch this. Th yeah, the point is this episode gets very dark. and But this episode is just, yeah, it's dark. Because, well... Okay, the live action, I only saw one clip of it, and it was hilarious how Yusuke got truck -hooned. But the idea of the anime is that he did not get truck -hooned by a full freaking <laughs> truck transport. But the thing is, the actual... It's the wake that's really the main part of this episode. And I'm going to remark that I think Yusuke had it worse off than... Even Kurama, for example. Kurama had it easy compared to Yusuke as a child. And I'm talking Shuichi, Minamino. He had it easy. He had a mother who actually genuinely cared for him. Oh, well, he looked down on her. Yeah, but Yusuke had a mother who, she looks at him, she doesn't see even see her child. She just looks at him and is like, ah, waste of space. She honestly did not care for him. She, like, it's not until he's gone that she realizes, oh, that was my son. There's something genuinely wrong and horrible about that. And she wasn't even bothered enough to care. Keiko, of course, her breakdown is, is something that I think I should have spent more time in the essay discussing because her breakdown is genuinely pain. This last viewing was genuinely painful to watch. It is like watching a widow lose her husband. And I wouldn't blame anyone from getting choked up just watching that. How can you not care about Yusuke after that one scene? And then you've got Kuwabara who just breaks down like he lost a sibling. And like I know you find that the Takanaka uh, 
lashing out at Yamamoto and the other guy. Uh, really important. That scene to me is like that's kind of irrelevant compared to the next part with Takanaka, yes. where he's grieving. And it's just like to get back to the male depression and anger thing. I have said like at one point I I did end up discussing the statistics of male suicide and whatnot and depression uh, with a family member. And what I was told was yeah, but what about female numbers and statistics? Why you know it was. Um, I was basically implied to be a misogynist for not mentioning those. And I told her it's far lower than male. And the system is built in such a way to favor the cities, the urban settings, and to push women into work positions and to push men out. This is the current structure the West is facing. But this is not a system that can last. This is a bad idea but this relative said, but what about the woman? How, what about how it affects them? And yeah, I think that in terms of how this affects women, let's actually talk about that. Women do not find work all that fulfilling in some cases. Actually, in almost all. Now, when it comes to accomplishing a dream, I'm going to say this cuts across both sexes. Women take, let's say you have a woman who dreams of being an artist course she's going to derive satisfaction and joy in that that's what she's always wanted but what she needs in a company that meant with that as a woman is a husband and kids that's the thing and this might sound weird but looking over at asia at some countries like japan can women have it all yes so why aren't we emulating? Like, the thing is, talking with some friends from some countries in Africa, there are African countries where women can have it all. Hungary. Women can have it all. Mongolia, for heaven's sake. Women can have it all. They can have the careers and jobs they want while also having the families they want and the husbands they want. Like, we know this. It's just... In the West, it, we just we need to completely flip the system over and rethink what we're doing, because the current way we're doing things is not working. Now, in Japan, there's also the problem that men are being overworked, but I can at least respect the Japanese for wanting to discuss the problem, and at least wanting to start making corrections. This is more than what I can say for, let's say, Canada where there is no desire or even thought to correcting the massive problems that are bringing down our country. And so that's the thing. Like, Yusuke is symptomatic of a problem Japan has faced and continues to face, but at least Japan is having the conversation. And that's something I do respect about the Japanese. They're discussing... They want to have the conversation, which... That's good. Let's discuss. Let's talk. And we do need to resolve this problem. Because, let's be honest, human beings were never meant for the kind of heavy 60 to 80 hour work weeks we're currently all subject to. This burns people out and breaks them. Burnout is a serious problem. And what comes after burnout? Suicide. Or shorten life spans. And that's the thing. We do need to consider how the system isn't working. The 19th century had a system that actually worked a lot better. Funny how that's a golden age and yet we're not trying to emulate it. Interesting fact. In heck, in the 20th century... And then 1900s and 20s and even the 50s. These seem to have been pretty darn good eras to live in. In a lot of places, not all, in the world. So why is it 
we've taken the wrong path. You know, like we have to ask the question. Well, obviously it was society and our elites who guided us down the wrong road. But some countries are wanting to discuss and veer back on track. There are a lot of people in France, a lot of people in Quebec who want that. A lot of people in Japan, a lot of people in Mongolia, Mongolia. Um, a lot of people in, well, Hungary, for example. I know I praise that country quite often, but that's the thing. This is a heart-wrenching episode about male anger and depression. And it has to be discussed. Yusuke is confronted by problems that are besetting adults. But he's a child. He should never have been facing these problems. It was on people like Takanaka, who did try, and Atsuko and others to shield Yusuke from those problems. Now, just to compare him to one Marvel or DC character, you know, a lot of fans like to think Peter Parker had problems. Oh, I'm sorry. Being married to a supermodel who's a millionaire and having Aunt Anna to help pay for everything while he was a teenager and child and un alongside Uncle Ben. Yeah, okay, we know Aunt May was gambling everything away, but, like, he at least had a lot more stability and love. Yusuke had even less. And yet Yusuke is being asked to... To step up and be a man without having a job or the possibility of getting one. And the trouble is his reputation does precede him. So he can't just apply anywhere. So he's screwed. There's a reason he later when he inherits the compound from Genkai. He has to stay there and live there and work there. He doesn't have... Unless he wants to go inherit the noodle shop from Keiko's dad which that's always a possibility. But unless he wants to work there in noodles, he ain't he does not have a future in that town. So Yusuke at least in episode 1, now later he gets a lot more happiness and he improves his situation and his perspective because as a friend recently told me, your focus determines your reality. To quote Qui-Gon Jinn from Star Wars. And that's the thing. Yusuke is focused on what gets him down. And you can't blame him for that or judge him because he's beset by problems he doesn't even understand. And that's the problem with modernity. Modernity is thrusting these problems onto us and very few men actually understand and know how to grapple with it and how to deal with it in a healthy manner. Like our ancestors probably would have been able to, such as those from the 19th century. But we're not them. So we have to figure things out on our own and try to measure up because the weight of our ancestors and of our history weighs on us. We have to measure up to them and we can. We just need to come together and do it. So yeah, anything more you want to add? It's <clears throat> and to finish off, Atsuko got Yusuke young with a case of that, uh, a child trying to raise a child. Yeah, that is sad. And But at 29, when she treats him like garbage? That should that should never uh, be the case. Yeah. And Yusuke could have turned out far worse. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he had a line in the sand. Yeah. He understood an aspect of good and bad. But he didn't know how to choose. Not initially. Not initially. Later, he shows a remarkable capacity for it. So, if you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe if you want. We're not going to oppress you. This is not the sort of topic you should press others for. And if you enjoy this article, go check out our Substack. we got others like this. And if you need help or something, there are people you can reach out to. So, do take care.